Hey gaming fans, so today we have another Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile, and this one's also for GOAT format. And uh, I called this deck Mind Crush. I was trying to come up with a good name for it. Um, essentially what it is, the deck is, is it's trying to always see what's in your opponent's hand, and then taking advantage of cards like Mind Crush, where uh, you declare a card name, and then they have to discard all copies of that card to the graveyard. Otherwise, you have to discard a random card. So you always want to know what's in your opponent's hand. And uh, we also have three um, DD Designator, which is the spell version of it. Uh, you declare a card name. Uh, you look at your opponent's hand, and if they have the declared card name, you remove one card from play with that name. Uh, so it is different. You also have, if you don't know, uh, what the, if you're wrong, um, you have to discard the card from your hand and remove it from play. Uh, so basically... Um, you're going to always want to know what's in there when your opponent's hand. Uh, but this is good because it banishes the card. Unfortunately, it doesn't hit all copies of it. Uh, but Mind Crush does. And the, and the thing is, Mind Crush is a trap, so you can activate it on your opponent's turn when they draw. So, to get to the deck on how to use these cards. So, the, for the first monster, we have three Ceremonial Bell. So, this is a weak monster. It's only zero attack, so you're never going to attack with this thing. Um, but, uh, while it's face up on the field, you and your opponent must show their respective hands to each other. So, essentially, everybody's hand is revealed as long as he's on the field. Now, it's a weird monster, it's just a bell, I don't know why a bell would, uh, be a monster, but, um, interesting card, and, uh, it does have high defense, so 1850, it can stand up to a lot of monsters that could attack it. Um, but you have to be careful, because on turn one, you might want to act, you know, put it in attack mode. So you'll have to kind of wait, find ways to defend it, which we have in this deck. So ways to pull it out, we have two Shining Angels. Um, I almost went to three for this card, uh, but I mean, it was just a, a space issue. Um, so uh, obviously when he's destroyed by battle, you get to special summon a light monster of 1500 or less. So you can grab your bell if you need it. Um, or you can grab another copy of itself, or you can grab the DD Warrior Lady, which is probably like one of the better targets for your Shining Angel. So it really depends on where you are in the duel. Um, but if you need that bell out quickly to see what's in your opponent's hand, you're probably going to pull that out. Then we have some Dark Monsters. So I got one Sangen uh, to search some of the Dark Monsters out. And then Wall of Illusion. Now the thing I like about Wall of Illusion is it, it's, well, it's got 1850 defense, um, and if your opponent attacks it, they that monster gets sent back to the hand. So um, you at least know one card that's in their hand. So if you had a Mind Crush set, um, you can actually, you know, once that card's in their hand, you, you can feel confident that you at least know one card. So maybe if you have two Mind Crush set, you can uh, target that one card that got sent back and then use the other one with your hand uh, knowledge of their hand to remove something else. Then, because we are playing the darks, we got two Mystic Tomatoes. Uh, same concept. Um, either pull out your Wall of Illusion or your Sangan, uh, whatever you might need. Um, we're also playing two Dakochis. Now, I, I threw these in just as kind of like, uh, I needed some extra dark monsters, and I needed a way to just get some more cards. I figure this is just a good way to do it. Um, I originally was going to have Sukuyumi in this deck to kind of, you know, use the flip effects over and over again. But again, it was just due to space and it just wasn't doing anything else other than that. Uh, but these will draw you your cards, help you get to your, your mind crushes and stuff faster. Of course, everybody plays a breaker. Why not? Uh, destroy a, mo uh, a spell or a trap. Now, another target for your uh, Mystic Tomato is Mind on Air. So this would be the same play as your Ceremonial Bell play. Obviously, he's got a little bit more attack. He's a 1,000 instead of zero. Um, or she, I don't know if that's a he or a she, whatever. Uh, Mind on Air pretty much is the same thing as Ceremonial Bell. Once it's up in attack mode or in defense, or face up, I should say, um, you get to see your opponent's hand. Now, this is a little bit different because it's only your opponent that has to show the hand, not you. Um, but it does have an okay defense, like 1600 defense, you know, there's a lot of, like, monsters that can't run over it if it's in defense mode, um, and it is a tribute monster, so you have to be, you know, aware of that if you draw it, it's kind of crap in your hand, you might not, you know, unless you need to, uh, tribute summon for it. So to actually do any kind of real damage in this deck, I put in the chaos monsters, because we are playing the light and dark, so why not play the chaos monsters, uh, they're the strongest ones you have, so... Um, you know, pulling out your ceremonial bells, getting your, your recruiters into the graveyard, uh, just so you can get your chaos monsters out on the field. 
for the spells, we've got some standard stuff here. Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, Premature Burial. Um, no Snatch deal in this deck. Um, I didn't find a need for it, but if you can find space for it, why not? Uh, same with Delinquent Duo. I was thinking about that. Delinquent Duo probably should be in this deck. Um, I don't know what to cut for it, though. Uh, so if you have any th thoughts or suggestions, throw it down here in the comments. Um, I figured we need some spell and trap removal. So, um, Nobleman of Extermination, at least you know, once you get a, a glimpse of your opponent's hand, you kind of know what they have. Also, if your opponent sees what you, uh, knows you're playing something like this type of deck, where you're, you're going to be looking at their hand, they might start to set their spells and traps uh, quickly, or most of their spells that they wouldn't normally set, uh, just so you can't see what it is. So you have Nobleman of Extermination to kind of just get rid of it. Uh, so if they set something that they're not intending to use right away, um, they might lose it to that card. So then we also have two Book of Moons. This might help you if you have to summon your Ceremonial Bell in attack mode um, because it's a zero attack, but it's great defense. So maybe your opponent might try and run into it with something weak um, and then you can just Book of Moon it and they run into an 1850 uh, wall. Or if you have to flip their monster face down, of course, you could also flip your Dakochis back down again, so uh, Book of Moon is just always useful. And we also have two Creature Swaps. Um, again, Ceremonial Bell, zero attack, so why not Creature Swap it over, take something that they have, and um, attack the Ceremonial Bell. Um, like, if you have a really good memory, you can always remember everything that's in your opponent's hand. Um, I'm terrible at it, but uh, some people have really good memories. I know some people also like to jot notes down. That's up to you, and if you're playing in a tournament, obviously there's rules against that, but uh, some rules against it anyways. And what I've seen too is if you're playing on Dueling Book, I've seen people do this before where they go in the chat and they write down the cards in your hand. I don't know if that's a legal play or not, but, you know, some people do it. So for the traps, we got Respect Play. Uh, so this is a continuous trap, and then during your respective turns, each player must show their opponents their hand. Now, I was kind of reading this. It kind of reads funny. Um, each player. So I'm assuming while this is face up on the field, every turn each player shows their hand. So uh, it looks like both players are always exposing their hand, not just the turn player, because it doesn't say the turn player. It just says each player must show their hand. So I think it's just the way they worded the cards back then. They were kind of weird. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's just a continuous trap of the ceremonial bell effect so you could see what's in your opponent's hand. So you'd probably set this in your mind crush and then activate it... Um, and then your mind crush to make sure you can grab a card. Uh, then we got Call of the Haunted, just because, you know, you can bring back your Chaos Monsters or whatever you need to do. Um, two Sakuratsu Armors and a Mirror Force, again, for protection, because your opponent's going to try attacking you aggressively, so uh, you need to stop their, their attacks so your Ceremonial Bells don't get run over. And, of course, Ring of Destruction. So that's pretty much the deck. Um, I just wanted to build a deck that's all about looking at your opponent's hand. It's it's hard to not want to play like full respect play in this deck, but I mean, it's once it, once it's out, um, you don't want to draw another one. And there is other cards too that that do the same idea. Um, you know, there there's one that uh, you look at your opponent's or your opponent shows their hand, and then during their standby phase, uh, they gain a thousand life points if they have a spell card in there. I didn't like that one because um, you're going to constantly be giving them a thousand life points each turn, and that's not good. Anyways, hope you like the deck. Throw some comments down below. Let me know how, what you think. Uh, I always like to hear your thoughts. Hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.